Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hi. Hi. Today, we're going to be making sense of life through The Wolf Pack. Yeah. This is a documentary in 2015, I think. Yeah. Uh, first documentary we co- we're covering. We're covering. Uh, which we'll, we will be covering which documentaries, we will be. too. Okay. You can promise. We can promise you that. So it's about... It is a true story. Yep. Um, as our... You know, hopefully most documentaries, documentaries want a good documentary. To, yeah, <laughs> like that is the point. Yeah, that's the point, right? And so you have a family of nine: a dad, mom, and uh, seven brothers and one si- sister. Yeah. Just for reference, we talked about the family of nine. So you have uh, the dad, Oscar Angulo, and then you have the mom, Suzanne. Then the brothers, Muk- um, the, the siblings, Mukunda, Narayana, Jagadisa. Vishnu, Krishna, Govinda, Bhagavan, and and yeah, so that's that's the family. And the dad has trapped the this entire family in a New York City apartment for basically their whole lives, right? Like it's like fourteen years yeah. until one of them basically breaks out, and then it's just you know yeah. release the water <laughs> yeah. or release the river yeah. <laughs> type of situation. Watch till the end. Yes. To see uh, where these people and and where this whole family ends up. And so they don't work, right? So the dad has the family trapped in there on philosophical grounds. He feels the world is unsafe. Mm -hmm. And um, he comes from a... I'm not sure which country he was from, but... South America. Yeah, I believe it's a South American country. That's how him and the wife meet. She was traveling. She grew up in a very... Midwestern. Yeah, Midwestern type of setting. Lots of trees, lots of country. Yeah. Right, like she grew up in God's country <laughs> and was hoping for that, and so she was enamored by this man that she meets as she's traveling um, across South America. Mm-hmm. And you know, they hit it off and they go back to America, they live in New York with mm-hmm. the view to save up and move to Scandinavia, but that never happens, mm-hmm. and so they end up living in New York. But the dad, with this obsession to have their kids be as totally clean as mm-hmm. possible decides I'm going to lock these kids in this apartment. I'm yeah. going to w- we're all going to be living in this apartment. Yeah. And he's the only one who has the key yeah. to the apartment and he's the only one who goes out to to, Do anything, to get, get groceries. Food. They compare it to being in a prison. We were in a prison. Yeah. And at night our cells would lock up. He was the warden. You say so. Yeah. So they said some years they never left the apartment. Yeah. So they leave Obviously, at, until the point he escapes, when yeah. they're leaving, yeah. it's like up to two times a year or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And there are years where they literally just don't leave the apartment. Yeah. And it's always with the parents um, or the dad yeah. supervising yeah. them outside. They're not allowed to talk to people. They're just quiet. Yeah. And so they don't really have any kind of engagement with mm-hmm. the outside world. Their source of income is... The mom homeschools them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she gets that. She gets an income and that's how basically they're living off of her. Mm-hmm. As of course, the dad does not believe in work, mm-hmm. right? And, um, which is, I guess, which is probably why they never made enough to go to Scandinavia. That was a bit of a hole in his plan. Yeah, there are lots of holes in this guy's plan, <laughs> yeah. right? And um, so ultimately, um, this one of the sons, Mukunda, when the dad has gone uh, grocery shopping, which usually takes three hours, he decides to break out. And he does, and then he gets, I think that's when he, um, because he was dressed very menacingly in one of the costumes that yeah, he made. Yeah, he got arrested by yeah. the cops, and they took him back, and then yeah. since then, you know, then everyone was shocked, of course, the yeah. fact that uh, he, they went from never being outside to being arrested. Yeah. But that is kind of what then uh, encouraged the rest of the kids to also mm-hmm. want to explore. And at that point, then, there was no going back. The genie was out of the bottle. Yeah. It follows that family, I guess, later on when at that point they were already getting more comfortable going outside. So they they interview everybody, except really the youngest daughter. It didn't seem like they, I'm assuming they just didn't really get any footage of her talking. She was probably very shy the way that all the sons were for the longest time. Yeah, which is one um, of the things the sons that said, they, right? They talk about where it's like, if you had met us a few years earlier, you wouldn't have got any a year we earlier. A year so. earlier. We wouldn't have been saying anything to you. We would have just been zombies. So yeah. they started to at least be more comfortable with outsiders talking to, engaging with people, you know. But yeah, it's, and that, that's, that's the documentaries about that family yeah. and just how the, the, the family, but the kids were raised by movies because they had no other outside uh, interaction or influence. So a lot of the movie is the sons, the six of them, the wolf pack. Like I guess they either call themselves or that's what the documentary calls them. They they had spent all their time 
making costumes out of yoga mats and cereal boxes, making Batman costumes as, and, and reenacting all their favorite scenes from their movies. All, yeah. they, they had 5,000 movies, VHS, DVDs, and that, that's what their lives were. Yeah, and they would write the script. like the, movie, the entire they, script. They, yeah, and they would it memorize would, it and reenact yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what they did. I actually grew up in a similar situation, not nearly to that extent, but homeschooled, and basically uh, our family was pretty, was, was quite antisocial, so movies and TV was our way of learning about how the world worked and how people were, and that was our only reference point. So when we'd go out places anywhere theme park disney world everything we would stay together we wouldn't really interact too too much i, I would i guess i was the chatty one i would talk to waitresses and stuff and but for the most part we would just be making references to each other and just saying like oh doesn't that remind you of this movie doesn't that remind you of this that you know that's how we talk yeah and so yeah i can relate a lot to this which movie. is what they do as well in that's what movie. they do and they go they go outside everything is is related to that they can only see their filters and lenses are through movies that they, that's how they refer to everything. The sons at this point, they've all started to try and go outside and rebel against their dad's tyrannical way of keeping the family, you know, in check. And so when they interact, there's, there's very little, all the sons are very resentful of the father at this point. I think they probably now start to see, and maybe before then they started to feel like they were being treated mistreated i mean they that apparently he at times would be abusive towards the mother which they're all very protective of yeah and it turns out that he's basically it seems like he's living with alcohol addiction yeah, too yeah yeah so that of course is something that everyone's going to pick up on where the one guy said that he felt when he struggles to even interact or look at his father because he just feels like everything about his father his essence everything surrounding him is just wrong can't yeah. even really explain it but it's just you know, and There's it's probably, nothing. he probably is picking up just the disease of alcoholism, the sickness, so much internal, like, pain and, and you know, self-hatred and, and hurt and pain directed towards what the father caused on him, on them as yeah. a family. And, but it's, it's interesting, though, that you get the father, when they do interview him a few times, in his mind, I think he does realize he screwed up to a degree, but he also doesn't take a lot of the blame either. He's like, well, at this point, it's on the kids to kind of make their way. And and I, I found it interesting when he was saying, I wanted to, he's, he finds the outside world sick and decadent and, and degrading, right? Which, sure, maybe he's got some points there, but his idea is then to take them so far out of that, that they can really under, like become who they are truly and not be influenced by society. The thing is, you're always going to be influenced by something. I remember watching it now this time, because it's the second time I've seen it. And I'm thinking, you know, for when people say that, when they say, we want you to be allowed to, because the mother said she went to the public school system and she found she got a lot of negative socialization, probably bullying and probably just, you know, bad conformist kind of elements and then pressures, social pressures. But the thing is, you're still going to get negative socialization by being completely cut off from other people. So it's not, you can never be, to become your true self, I think just means spending time like living life and always reflecting on what do I like keeping a, a record a tab I think on your yourself like but you to be your true self is always going to be changing so there is no I think I think some people have this sometimes where it's like there's the external world that puts a, uh, that affects you and makes you conform or makes you change who you truly are but your true self isn't just this this pure thing that yeah. I think gets contaminated I think that's the word that the father uses he didn't want his kids to be contaminated but he's contaminating them by treating them like prison inmates exactly. it's a different kind of contamination you know so there's always going to be effects and contamination on people you know they're so it's just it's kind of what what kind of contamination do you want to yeah um contaminate people with he does say like we're all circumstances of, yeah. of life. And victims of circumstance. Yeah, victims yeah. of circumstance. And the person interviewing him asks, don't you feel like you should ask for forgiveness from your kids? Mm -hmm. There's a mild acknowledgement of that what he, he's done is wrong. Mm -hmm. He says, I, of course, I didn't want them to grow up like this. And yeah. that's what he talks about, the Scandinavia thing. He's like, I didn't want them to grow up this way. And um, I feel sad that, that this happened. You know, like there is never any deep-seated 
connection to this the, this ha- that happened mm-hmm. as being him who actually made this thing yeah. that happened happen and i don't think it's because he doesn't believe that he did anything wrong but i think it's because there's a deep shame mm-hmm. and there are lots of things that happen um in the way that he interacts with the kids that you can see yeah. that he is very ashamed of it right i don't want to be existing with certain people um, and so I'm going to just like be in the house, right? Like that is a form of contamination mm-hmm. by the world because why would you allow other people to affect your well-being mm-hmm. and your family's well-being to that extent? Mm-hmm. And number two, he's affected by the world for the fact that he still loves music. Like he's yeah. like, I don't want you to go, I don't want to work. I don't want you to go outside, but we love music here. He has yeah. the kids yeah. learn, um, watch all of these, you know, artists. And then they all learn how to play music instruments. And he also says, but it would be okay if you guys yeah. became artists. If yeah. you became yeah. artists, then yes, you can go out there yeah. in the world and you guys could be mu- Which musicians. Which is interesting because he feels like, well, if you guys got a record deal, that's a way that you, and you're like, first yeah. of all, that's still one of the, also an ex- incredibly exploitative industry just like yeah. any other so of all a, things of just, all just, things yeah. yeah i think uh that's where it is just more of like a selfish like i really like music so you guys could do that and yeah that that's where you know i think again that's where you can develop these kind of subcultures or cults or things where people have these blinders on where they see some issues with society that i think are are legitimate but then their way of of their solution is yeah. just to kind of cause another unhealthy Detriment, environment yeah. you know they have 5000 movies in yeah. their home that he purchases for them yeah you're talking about not wanting to get your kids contaminated yeah yeah i mean yeah. by the world well, like the mama at one point says like too much of anything is bad yeah. it's like so the parents have some self awareness of what they did to their kids but they they just both i kind of have this like sh- just resigned to the fact that yeah well there's nothing we can do about it now even though I'm, there were years you only catch them at the tail end of you know, where the kids start to actually want to live outside in the, in the world. Um, yeah. So, you know, how long, what was going through their heads for the longest time when they were having their fourth kid, fifth kid, sixth kid, and still just staying in the apartment and, and raising them on movies? You know? Yeah. Whatever grounds this dad decides to lock his, to imprison his family mm-hmm. into this apartment, they are certainly not altruistic. You mm-hmm. see really that they stem from his own personal mm-hmm fear and insecurities yeah. one of the things that we we get we get from the mom she says that when after mukunda escapes right and then the rest of the, the of the sons basically start becoming very hard to manipulate which mm-hmm. is something that the dad does and he says he says that he's like one thing i'm really good at is influencing people mm-hmm. and he really did he was manipulating these people yeah. it was a, pro- a proper prison ward Mm -hmm. you know like these kids could not even um leave the room until he said it's okay you can get off of that couch and and go wherever else right when makuda finally leaves and the the rest of the kids start they stop being afraid of him Mm -hmm. the mom says that you know oscar the dad always knew that this would happen Mm -hmm. but she says he felt that it wasn't the time you know and he said that he felt like it should have happened later when everyone was ready. Mm-hmm. Basically what that means is when he was ready, mm-hmm. when he wanted it, which yeah. obviously would have never happened yeah. ultimately because he's so avoidant of his reality of himself and why, uh, and the choices, the toxic choices he's making. The whole thing has nothing to do with concern for the family. It is more for himself. What the mom says, I like it. She's like, if when things are happening, they are meant to happen at that time. There was no, the kids are going to, you know, there's a specific time, there's a right time for the kids to go up. If they're breaking out of the house and, you know, deciding that they're not going to listen to you anymore, it means it's, it's time. Mm-hmm. They want to be adults and that they're ready. And of course, he didn't like that. Um, he didn't like not having control anymore. Also, the, the kids were more openly expressing their resentment towards him. You mm-hmm. could see, you know, like in the videos, the older videos, yeah. when they were still uh, locked in there, you could see that they they had this these resentments. The dad would kiss them um, mm-hmm. on the lips and... And they wouldn't like it. And they, they wouldn't would like it or... Badly. Or they, yeah. would, they would hug oh, their mom and just walk and by just, their dad. Yeah. yeah. Even when they go out that one time to the apple orchard... The husband is keeps trying to pull the wife away to walk from away, the kids. and the wife just eventually she's like, "No, I want to hang. We've been avoiding the kids the whole, the whole day. day. Yeah. yeah, I want to see what they're doing. I want to spend time with them." And yeah. then he walks away. It's an interesting documentary, just in terms of people's perspectives and the stories they tell themselves to justify things. Yeah, you know, Oscar in his mind, of course, feels like still to avoid all that shame, and and because he just doesn't want to face up 
to all the stuff he caused, the pain he caused his family. He doesn't want to have that talk with them, which he needs to do. Otherwise, he's going to just keep drinking and not be able to really get over it. But in his mind, he's like, oh, well, it's too late now. So what's done is done. Yeah. You know, that's how a lot of people deal with that stuff without actually dealing with it. So again, it's like, how much do you try to avoid things that you think are negative in the culture versus knowing that you need to have some assimilation some understanding and ability to to navigate to navigate it, it. Yeah. yeah and that's the thing that one of the kids talks about the resentment that he has towards his dad man this movie was so sad mm -hmm. because he says you know my greatest fear is not being able to make it out there because i grew up in here and i never gained the tools to actually be able to make it out there you mm -hmm. know and this is true the reality is you are living in the world mm -hmm. you are living in this place that you think that you don't like and you're not giving your kids the resilience yeah. that they need to be able to make it so that whatever issue they are, whatever hardships mm -hmm. they are, they can get past them relatively okay. Mm -hmm. If you're having kids, but, know then that they are going to go through the same hardship, the same heartbreak, yeah. the same everything that everyone else goes through. Yeah. The best thing you can do, I think, as a, as a parent, instead of trying to cocoon your kids, is to have an open in relationship enough mm -hmm. that your kids will come to you yeah. when things are happening. And then they can, you will, you basically help them. Yeah dissect the mm -hmm. situation and how to move forward you yeah. give them that that you know resilience that they need yeah. and understanding that everybody goes through this it's a tough thing mm -hmm. you just have to learn how to yeah. you know to exist in the world with this stuff yeah. yeah these these situations are always very tricky when you have a mother who's also being abused and mm -hmm. locked in right because at the end of the day as children who are you depending on you're depending on both mom and dad and one would hope that when dad is messing up, mom swoops in and and saves the day. Mm -hmm. Or when one of the parents, or when mom messes up, dad comes in and saves the day, right? Because both of you as parents have a mutual responsibility to take care of your kids. So I was thinking, I, I, I was reflecting on how I felt about the mother, you know, because I think obviously I know situations of abuse and manipulation can really get to that point where you're so weak even if you are the parent one of the, the other the good parent wanting better for your kids yeah. you get so crippled psychologically mentally in all the different ways by this partner the do more domineering partner who doesn't give you the opportunity to to try and save your kids and so then you're just forced to kind of watch it happen yeah. and I one of the kids goes to work right and he's asking, have you guys seen this movie? Have you guys have seen yeah. this movie? And you're just thinking, oh man, you know, this kid, like his reference points yeah. are movies. Yeah, and, goes yeah. from like, who's, who's watching Game of Thrones? Yeah. Great, Breaking Bad? Like they're yeah. just gonna rhyme off everything. Yeah, and that's basically it. Like yeah. what else are you gonna talk about, yeah. right? Um, and he's trying. He's yeah, trying. he is trying and that's great. Yeah. And I'm hoping that he'll figure out, okay, we have to move past just talking yeah. about movies. What else can we yeah. can we talk about? Yeah. But all of them have a lot to to really adjust to. Mm -hmm. Even just adjusting to their situation changing, even if it is a healthier situation, you still have to get used to that fact. Yeah. Because there is still that. Yeah, it was a prison, but we know that environment. Exactly. This is a new thing. Yeah. So that still takes getting used to. Yeah. And it's scary too in its own way. Yeah, it's absolutely scary. It's scarier because when you're growing up, right, in the world, it's so much easier to adjust to things because you have your parents. But your, if your parents locked you into into an apartment, you're facing the world on your own and figuring, you you have to become your own parent first, right? Mm. And that's really hard. The one guy, you know, he just like naturally goes into these different accents as oh, if yeah. he almost doesn't really have his own voice, which again, I, you know, I can I can relate to where... When you watch in a day and weeks and months, you watch all these different movies with all these different voices and characters and and accents and everything, and you imitate them. That's what kids do. Then, yeah, it's, at times you do start to feel like, what is my actual voice? How do I actually talk? If you do come from that kind of situation, you aren't, you don't, you're not allowed to express your feelings mm -hmm. whatsoever. Your feelings in that home don't matter. Yeah, and that's just the the reality. And so you're just kind of like numb the whole time. Yeah. They're walking outside and they're talking like, you know, uh, someone from The Godfather yeah, or, yeah. you know. Gangsters, gangsters or Pulp or, Fiction. You yeah. Know, a lot of, yeah. Because like, that's either, either they do that as a coping thing to want to make them less scared by going outside so they can be like, I'm, I'm going to be like that badass from that, uh, from yeah. Pulp Fiction or something. Yeah. Um, or they just do that because that's what they do all the time around each other. Right. Yeah. So that that's what they're comfortable doing. Traumatized people shut down emotionally. That's just easy go-to way 
from avoiding the pain, the one brother, I forget which one, wants to put on a, a make a movie because that's you know that's what wants the, they grew up around that so his movie is that it's this person looking through the window which is probably all they could do when they were shut up in their apartment and he imagines all these emotions going by and he gets to kind of experience them that way as he does watching a movie which is what he does he experiences all these people acting out these emotions but in real life they were so they weren't allowed to ever be they, so they just only get to experience it that second hand or but again there's still that you can't kill that need for humans to, in some way, experience emotions. And I think a lot of people are attracted to movies with a lot of emotion that they themselves kind of suppress, I've noticed, you know. I feel like the, that that's a way that they can still kind of experience emotion without doing it themselves, yeah. you know. But there is just that fact that humans need to be to, emotional yeah. to survive, you know. Thank you for watching, yeah. and hopefully, if you've seen this, if yeah, seen comment it, yeah, down yeah, below, share your thoughts and our thoughts, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, and until next time, though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bye. That's a wrap. We need to get one of those clicker Ooh, things. Do the thing again. I wonder if you can just you buy those right, things. Baby. I know, I know, I know. Marker. <laughs> but until next time, that's a wrap.